Hello all, today we will talk about how to change the visibility of a scene component within a blueprint. Let's jump in. All right, in my content drawer, I will right click and say new blueprint class of type actor. And I will call this BP underscore visibility change actor. All right, in my content drawer, I will right click, add a new blueprint class of type actor, and I will call this BP underscore component visibility change. Let's double click to open this up. First, we'll start by adding a series of components to our actor in the details panel. Nope. First, let's start by adding a series of components in our components panel on the left. I'll click the add button and I will add a sphere, which is a static mesh. I will add a text render. I will add a spotlight. I will add a box collision and I will add a cube. I'm going to parent the cube Actually, first, I'm going to change the size of the box. I'll change the size of the box to 150 by 150 by 150. I'll move this off over here. I'll select the box, and I'm going to change the scale to 3 by 3. And I'll drag this over here, and I'll position it towards the base, and I will scale this so that this will be a little floor to a collision box. I'm going to make the box collision the parent of the cube. Now, I'll lift this up just a little bit, but we can also do that in our environment. And let's now take our spotlight. I'll select it over here in the components panel. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees so it's facing down. I'm going to bring it up above the sphere. And then in the details, I'm going to change the inner and outer cone angle to 35. And let's take our text render. I will move it up above the cone. I'm going to change the horizontal alignment over here on the details panel to be center and the vertical alignment to be center as well. I'm going to add some text in the details panel as well and we'll say I am visible exclamation point and I'm actually going to do control D on the on the keyboard which is duplicate so you'll see a second text pop up when I do control D it'll create new instances so I'll delete this and I'm going to call this child text and I I entered the rename by doing F2 on the keyboard or you can right click and say rename it'll show you the little hotkey right there and I'm going to drag this down just a little bit, and this will say child text. In a second, you'll see why. And I'm going to drag child text onto text render. All right, let's compile and save our blueprint. Okay, let's go over into our event graph. I'm going to right click on my box right here on the details panel and I will go to add event, add on component, begin overlap. And I will do the same, I'll right click one more time and say add on end overlap. So in a second we'll add a function, but basically this will allow us to get an event when a player enters the box or an actor enters the box. And this is when it leaves that box collision that we've created right here. So let's create a, an event. <clears throat> I'll right click and say add custom event, hit return, and let's call this uh, change component visibility. And I will add an input over here on the right. And so I'll hit this plus sign. And I will change this parameter name to visible question mark. You know, it doesn't really need the question mark, but just for the sake. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my sphere, my text render, and my spotlight, drag them off the details panel. I'm going to pull off one of them and say, uh, set visibility. And you'll say it says target is scene component. So with any scene component, I can change the visibility by just sort of dropping it into this target. So I'll take my spotlight and my sphere, and I will drag visible into where it says new visibility. I'll connect these two execution pins. And I'll explain in just a moment with the, uh, actually, here, here's what we'll do. Uh, I will pull off here and say promote to variable. And so this propagate to children is something we can expose as a variable. So we can edit that in our viewport. We have propagate to children in the instance of the text render text. So we have this text render and then the child text below it. If propagate to children is false, then child text will not become invisible. Uh, when it is true, it will become invisible and follow the same visibility change as its parent. So now that we have this simple function, we will pull off of our on begin overlap. And on the other actor, I will say cast to character. And if it is a character, I'm going to change component visibility. And I'll say true. I'm going to control C and then control V this down here, just because we're going to use the same logic. On other actor, I'm going to connect to object and we're going to test is this a character overlapping the box. If it is, I'm going to make it invisible. And let's make this invisible also on begin play. So I'm going to control C this, go up here to our begin play, drag this execution pin in, and we will make it also invisible. So let's drag this into our environment. I'll drag two instances of it. And I'm going to turn the angle of the sun by holding control and L simultaneously and moving my left, uh, moving my mouse. So now we can see that light a little bit better. I'm going to right click, say play from actually, let me make sure one of these is selected. So this one will say propagate to children. So we expect that the visibility changes will be the same in the child text as the parent text here, but I will right click, say play from here. And so we can see that child text has not listened to any of the visibility changes we've done on the right. But when I enter this, I'll see all of the components of the blueprint change their visibility. And on the right, I'll see the three that we've specified and it is not applied it to the child of that other component. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you learned something today, please subscribe for more Unreal Engine 5 content.